Hi everyone. Um, this video is about um, the decision we all have to make eventually um, when we should start receiving Canada or Quebec pension plan. I'm going to focus more on Quebec. Um, there are a few differences between um, Quebec and Canada pension plan. And namely, in Quebec we can continue to contribute if we are working to the Quebec pension plan past the age of 70 and those contributions will apply to supplementing your existing uh, pension. Whereas in Canada, uh, you have the election uh, between the age of 65 and under 70 to stop contributing to the uh, uh, Canada pension plan. So things are a bit different in Quebec, but one thing is the same is we can all decide uh, when to receive it, starting at age 60, waiting until 65, or sometime in between, or ultimately waiting until we turn 70. So the way the um, Régie de Rente Quebec, which is our pension board, um, spins it is that they have this beautiful table at this, uh, uh, this um, uh, site, and I'll post a link in the description below, and they give an example of uh, how your the amount that your annual uh, amount will increase if you postpone and also they give you the difference between one year and the next how the amount of pension plan you can uh, receive will increase incrementally as you wait until age 65 or uh, up to age 70. It's a great example um, however what we also need to take into consideration, and before I go any further, the common disclaimer, I am not a CPA nor a financial planner, and I have no mutual funds to sell or any investments. So this is purely for instructional purposes. You should consult other sources before you ultimately make up your mind. So let's go on to my numerical example here. So I have three different scenarios. Someone that receives it at age 60, and these examples are based on the government chart. And I call him the early bird, or her the early bird, the average Joe or average Jane that receives the decides to receive the pension at age 65, and the late bloomer that re decides to receive the pension at age 70. Um, nothing derogatory intended. So let's take, for example, the early bird. So he would start, according to the chart that the government provided, receiving approximately 6400 But in the second year and all the subsequent years, they will have accumulated earnings. And it's important to, to take into consideration, for this period of amount of time, the present value of, of, of having that cash up front so you can invest it, perhaps, in, and put it into your RSP. Now, of course, if you need the cash and you have no other choice, that's a reality also that can influence your, your decision. Now, if a person were to wait until age 65, according to the government example, they would receive, let's say, $10,000. But the early bird already accumulated $39,620.19 of pension for that five-year period. Now, the average Joe would not catch up until uh, quite a few years later. Now, this bar here indicates, this row here indicates the a year, uh, how old the taxpayer is, the taxpayer's age. So I, I, you can see at age 65, the person that started receiving the paid pension early has accumulated roughly 39000 and the average Joe starts at age uh, at age 65 has accumulated only 10,000. Now the other important th thing that you need to take into consideration in making this decision is your longevity. So by age 73, at that point, um, at that point, uh, there there we're coming close to an equilibrium between the average Joe and the early bird. And then after that point, should both taxpayers live to age 84, at that point, the average Joe will surpass by roughly $1,000 the early bird. Um, again, 
we cannot discount the importance of the present value of the er early earnings that you could have taken, put them in your pocket, or invested them. Now, um, the other scenario is you wait until age 70, and here's the column for age 70, and you can see that both the average Joe and the early bird have accumulated qu quite a he wealthy, healthy sum of money. And as they progress, if they continue living and continue receiving the, uh, their pensions, um, you'll see that only at age 70, uh, actually, let's take a look here, uh, only at age, let's go back one column, yep, only at age 81, will ultimately the Blake Bloomer accumulate more earnings than everyone else. So I put a couple of red tags based on the average life expectancy of the average Canadian male. I have one uh, at 80, 88 and I, if you live to, to see age 88 the late bloomer will have accumulated ultimately at that point more uh, uh, um, more uh, uh, er accumulated earnings than the um, the early bird. Um, possible scenarios that you can uh, take into consideration. Do you need the funds? Do you, if you do not need the funds, um, that's important. Also, are you planning to invest that income or do you need it to pay down debt and make uh, a living? All those are factors that you really need to take into consideration. But what's important is that you need also to do some research and consult certain professionals before you make the decision. And um, do not go with this table alone because what I'm attempting to show here is um, what you need to understand is between eight, the age of 60 and 65, if you ultimately do uh, need the funds or you ultimately decide to, to uh, uh, take the uh, pension early for one reason or another, you have alternatives. And the alternative would be if you have our alternatives would be if you have a, additional RSP room, you can contribute the, the sum directly to your RSP. You can certainly invest it. You can certainly put it in a TFSA. Um, so it is not as straightforward as what uh, the table uh, reports on the uh, government website. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and that. Um, it leads to further research and it will help you uh, decide what suits you, what would suit you uh, m uh, more. But uh, again, uh, I am not a CPA or a financial planner and uh, you should do more research before you ultimately decide and certainly consult uh, your accountant and or a professional uh, wealth Manager. Take care and uh, see you next time.